Income Tax 2022-2022 De Minimis Safe Harbor Tangible Property. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from the Tax Guide for Small Business for Individuals Who Use Schedule C, Publication 334, Tax Year 2022, you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one, income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, an income statement, but just an outline other forms and schedules flowing into these line items, one of those being the Schedule C, it having business income minus business expenses, the net business income then flowing in from the Schedule C to line one income of our income tax formula. First page of the Form 1040 noting that the Schedule C generally flows into the Schedule 1, which generally flows into page 1, 1040, line number 8. The Schedule C is the profit or loss from business having an income statement format. Income minus expenses were focused here on the expense side of things. And in particular, the de minimis safe harbor for tangible property. So generally, you must capitalize costs to acquire or produce real or tangible personal property used in your trade or business, such as building, equipment, or furniture. However, if you elect to use the de minimis safe harbor for tangible property, you may deduct de minimis amounts paid to acquire or produce certain tangible property if these amounts are deducted by you for financial accounting purposes or in keeping your books and records. In other words, let's think about this just from a bookkeeping standpoint. You might have an expense account for supplies or an expense account for repairs and maintenance, and you might run across some items where the question comes into your mind as to whether you can just expense these items when you purchase them, or do you have to put them on the books as an asset, in which case you would generally have to be allocating the cost over the useful life. Now, from an accounting standpoint, that's an accrual kind of question, meaning did you consume the expense in the current time frame? If you did, then it would be just an expense, meaning if you bought the supplies and you used the supplies in the current time frame, you would think that would be an expense. Same with like a repairs and maintenance type of situation. But if you're purchasing something that's going to be consumed for multiple periods into the future, you would think then from an accounting standpoint, you would put it on the books as an asset and then depreciate it uh, basically over its useful life. However, we can think of things that we're gonna do that with that are still pretty small in terms of dollar amount. So you might think, yeah, I bought like five years supplies of paper clips or something like that. It's still pretty small in terms of dollar amount. So is it really worth our time to do the more complex thing of putting it on the books as an asset and then allocating the cost over its useful life, even though technically I would be using it over a long period of time. So many purchases that are that are low in dollar amount, even if you plan on using them for a long period of time, you might be saying, hey, look, it's not worth my time to put it on the books and capitalize it because it's in essence immaterial. It's a small amount compared to my total income. It's not gonna have a big impact on my financial decision-making, and in this case, on the taxes. So you have a similar kind of concept here. Now you might be thinking, hey, look, I'm on a cash-based method and you're talking about this accrual stuff. It doesn't matter to me at all because I'm cash-based. But even if you're on a cash-based system, we know the tax code is gonna force you to deviate from the cash-based system for large pieces of equipment and you're still gonna have to put them on the books as an asset. So if you buy like a forklift or something, you can't just expense forklift expense typically. You have to put it on the books as an asset and then use the depreciation methods to depreciate it. 
Now, the thing that's kind of weird about the tax code right now is that you end up in the same spot oftentimes because if you just expensed like a big piece of equipment, like a, like, you know, a forklift or a piece of office equipment that's a big piece of equipment, then you would get the expense in the current time period. If you're forced to capitalize it, then you're going to put it on the books as an asset that you would normally depreciate over its useful life, like five or seven years. But they currently have the 179 deductions and, and the special depreciation, which may still allow you to, in essence, take the expense up front. So you might say, well, what's the point? You end up in the same spot either way, possibly, and that might be true. But the concept here is that is that do you have to put something on the books as just an expense or do you have to put it on the books as a depreciable item in the future? It's likely that the tax code might change like the 179 and special depreciations because those are typically distortions that are used to stimulate the economy. However, it's unpopular to remove those items. So you'll think they might not do it, but we're in a, a stage where the economy is kind of overheating. So you would think if, it, if things were running right, they would actually reduce those, you know, at this point in time but it's not popular to do politically. So it's kind of an interesting situation, but that's the general idea. So if it's a small, so then the question is, do I have to put it on the books as an asset or not? So if you have an applicable financial statement, you may use this safe harbor to deduct amounts paid for tangible property up to $5,000 per item or invoice. So if you do not have an applicable financial statement, you may use the de minimis safe harbor to deduct amounts paid for tangible property up to $2,500 per item or invoice. So from a, a general like accrual theory standpoint, the theory standpoint would be, hey, look, if you use this thing that's going to be used for multiple years into the future, you should use the matching principle. We're trying to match when you consumed it to when to when you earn the income related to the consumption and therefore you should depreciate it. But from a practical standpoint, we're, we want to set a dollar limitation typically because we don't want to go through the added pain of depreciating if it doesn't really matter for us to just expense it because it's immaterial in essence. All right, amounts qualifying under this de minimis safe harbor should be included as other expenses in part five of Schedule C. More information. For details on keeping this election and requirements for using the de minimis safe harbor for tangible property, you can see chapter one of publication 535 on the IRS website. Other expenses you can deduct. You may also be able to deduct the following expenses. You can see publication 535 to find out whether you can deduct them. You've got advertising, obviously bank fees. You would think that would be a standard kind of deduction if the bank fees were related to your business account. Donations uh, to business organizations you would think be deductible. Uh, d donations to business organizations. Now you gotta be a little bit careful with like charity charity uh, kind of situations there. But in any case, uh, education expenses, impairment related expenses, interview expense allowances, licenses and regulatory fees. So license and regulatory fees that are kind of related to, you know, what you need for credentials for your business, of course. Moving uh, machinery, uh, out, out place, uh, placement services, penalties and fines you pay for late performance or non-performance of a contract, repairs and maintenance to real or tangible personal property, payment of income, supplies and materials and utilities. So notice when we're talking about like moving machinery, that's one you've got to be a little bit careful of because again the question is is the machinery you're moving part of the machinery that you purchased or something like that in which case do you have to record it as part of the machinery unless it fits in the de minimis kind of category uh, so that you can expense it uh, and then supplies and materials is often an account like when you're looking at your information to do your taxes and you're trying to think are there any items that are going to be that I expensed, that I recorded to an expense account that should be capitalized. So you might scan through like your supplies and your materials accounts, and you might scan like the repairs and maintenance general ledger account, the detail to see if there's like large items in there that really should be pulled out of there and, and put on the books as a depreciable uh, asset.